we're looking this morning at how what happens in Latin America and the Caribbean has a direct impact on the United States and on politics, on the politics of November 2024 included. I had the opportunity to speak with some voters in the heart of Little Havana here in Miami. We heard from them on a wide variety of key issues yesterday, but I want you to listen to what Sandra Dennis, the executive director of the Miami Workers Center, has to say about why what's happening in places like Haiti, Venezuela, Cuba, plays an important part in how she votes here. When I'm talking about um, you will earn my vote, we're watching what happens um, in these countries because it's going to impact us, our funds, our stress levels, our health, right? And so our futures are linked, our humanities are linked. For me, it's really important for the right, for America to have a right stance, to have fair policies, to be mindful about what it means to support and help and not dictate uh, what happens in folks' countries. And if the Caribbean and Latin America is not successful, if they are on a spiral, a downward spiral, it's absolutely going to show up here. And for more on this, I want to bring in NBC News Washington correspondent Jimmy Schalsendor and former Republican Congressman Carlos Curbelo from Florida. He is also an MSNBC political analyst. So I was just thinking about this, Jimmy and Carlos. All three of us were actually born here in South Florida, a place where what happens in Haiti, Cuba, Venezuela, Colombia feels almost like it's happening here in many ways, right? In Haiti, just in the last three weeks, 53,000 people have had to flee Port-au-Prince. The spiral of violence continues. Why, Yamish, is this not part of the national political discourse? Jose, it's such a good question. And part of it is that the national political discourse is so filled with so many other topics, including, of course, abortion, housing, the economy. But as you point out, in South Florida, where we all grew up and where we all come from, the international is the domestic. You have Haitian Americans in particular, um, my family and people that I've interviewed, who are looking at what's going on in Haiti and will absolutely be voting uh, for the person that they think will best impact the situation there. And of course, we know that former President Trump, um, he had not kind words for Haitians, at, at times um, equating them to, to just things that people felt were problematic. Um, so you really have it in, in Joe Biden, someone who has been talking about Haiti, talking about these countries, saying that he wants to do more, but also there being frustration there with sort of what America is able to do in Haiti. So you have these two people that are likely, of course, going to be the people that are going to be having a rematch in November. Um, both of these people, um, voters are really weighing their international policies as well as their domestic policies. But it is something that we need to talk more about because these voters, of course, are in critical places like Florida, which, while it's become redder and redder, is also a swing state, Jose. It is. And, and just thinking about the reality for hundreds of thousands of people in Haiti that are really, in many ways, kind of always forgotten unless something really bad happens. And it's such a, a tragic reality that they're living through. And Carlos, that's what's going on in Haiti. And meanwhile, in Venezuela, where you have the largest exodus of people in the Americas, the Maduro regime there is, as we speak, shutting down any democratic institution or possibility of democracy. Could ignoring what's happening there have political repercussions here? Jose, foreign policy is local policy and politics in South Florida. There are many voters in the South Florida region, as you well know, that pay at least the same amount of attention to what's happening to the south of us and around us in our neighborhood than in our own country, because these are people who have family members in these countries. They might have come from some of these countries in recent years, so those ties to, uh, to Latin America are very strong. And you often hear in South Florida, a lot of frustration from voters who say, why do U.S. policymakers always look east and rarely look south? Why do we invest so much in Europe, in the Middle East, in the Far East, and uh, pay such little attention to what's happening in our own neighborhood and to our south? Uh, there are real political consequences to this. We've seen in South Florida uh, that uh, a lot of voters have started uh, moving uh, from uh, 
being reliable Democratic supporters to Republican supporters because they feel that Democrats, the Biden administration, before that the Obama administration, really didn't hold regimes like Nicolás Maduro's regime accountable, the Castro regime in Cuba, the Ortega regime in Nicaragua. So uh, a lot of this explains the shift we've seen in Florida politics over the last decade or so. And you mean, meanwhile, perceptions about and around immigrants seem to be changing a little bit here in our country. More people believe legal immigrants bring a higher risk of crime than they did seven years ago. It's a perception that clearly contrasts with the reality. But, Yamish, how responsible are politicians here in creating this narrative that immigrants and migrants are a negative? versus a positive? Well, political leaders have a huge impact in the way that Americans see immigrants, especially when you when you have people, frankly, like former President Trump, who is, of course, now running in the Republican as a Republican nominee. Um, you have him talking about immigrants in a way that's saying that they're criminals, um, in a way that's saying that they're bringing in drugs, um, in a way that's saying that they're taking people's jobs. And I've heard from voters, both Democrats and Republicans, frankly, who don't agree on a lot of other things, who are very concerned about the border, even if they live in places like Ohio or Michigan where they're thousands of miles away from the border, they still think that some of the bad and negative things that, that are the perceptions of immigrants, including, as you said, legal immigrants, that that's somehow going to negatively impact what they're doing and, and, and their lives in their states. And I also have to underscore that when we think about the, the, the role that legal immigrants are playing in this country, not only are they doing things like 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 repairing potholes on the, the bridge that the, the collapsed in, in Baltimore, thinking about those immigrants, but they're also doing things like sending money back to places like Haiti, where you see the remittances that are going into that country really holding up the GDP, meaning that Haiti's economy, the actual country, it's being held up by the Haitian diaspora that is not only working hard here in America, but that is sending money back to um, their families. So this really underscores in some ways that the legal immigrants in this country, they're really feeling as though their perceptions of them um, are, are really impacting their negatively their lives while also they're trying to help out their family members. So political leaders, their discourse here, including, I'll say frankly, President Biden, because I've heard from some immigrants who say when he's talking about being tough on the border and he's talking about immigration, it can also feed at times into the negative bias that you see immigrants dealing with in this country, Jose. That uh, Haitian diaspora that contributes so much to our economy, to our culture, and to the growth of the United States. Yamish, turning now to another issue for voters, the war in Gaza. You're out with new reporting today about some of the behind-the-scenes conversations happening at the White House. What are you learning? That's right. Well, I've learned now through conversations with someone who attended a meeting that President Biden had on Tuesday with Muslim um, leaders that... Force Lady Jill Biden has been privately urging President Biden to put an end to the war in Gaza and the mass civilian casualties that we're seeing happen in Gaza. The person said that during that meeting on Tuesday that the president was listening to a doctor who had been treating people in Gaza. That doctor was saying that his wife did not want him to come to the White House because they, he, they, she frankly didn't want him to be sitting down with the president because he hasn't called for a permanent ceasefire and a number of other things. Um, and the president's response was, well, my wife, I understand that because my wife has also been urging me on this issue. And the person, Selena Suswell, who was an attendee um, of the dinner, she told me, or I should say of the meeting, they didn't have dinner because they didn't want to break bed because of the people starving in Gaza. But the meeting, she said that the president said, quote, Jill Biden has said to, quote, stop it, stop it. Again, going back to the idea that she really wants the mass casualties in Gaza and this war to be put to an end. So it really tells you that within the administration and with Jill Biden in particular, she is using her voice to privately urge President President Biden to put an end to this war, as we're seeing, of course, he's now going to be talking to Benjamin Netanyahu today, and also as he's really had a tougher language um, on Israel, while U.S. policy might not have changed, he, you are seeing sort of a more biting stance on the U.S. policy with Israel. So it really tells you a little bit about the internals that are going on in the White House, Jose. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.